Hello, it's January the 18th, 2021. Tim Ross here. Uh, we're going to start a devotion. We're going to start in the Psalms, chapter 18. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my, my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death encompassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell encompassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and he came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent from above. He took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hand. Hath he recompensed me? For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine inequity. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the forward thou wilt show thyself forward. For thou wilt wilt save the afflicted people from wilt bring down high looks for thou wilt light my candle the lord my god will enlighten me enlighten my darkness for by thee i have run through a troop and by my god have i leaped over a wall as for god his way is perfect the word of the lord is tried he is a buckler to all those that trust in him for who is god save the lord or who is a rock save our god It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. And thou hast girded me with strength, and unto the battle thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but they were none to save them even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen, a people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avenged me, and subdueth the people under me. 
He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. Psalms 18. Now we'll look at uh, Proverbs 18. Though through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh an intermittently with all wisdom, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. When the wicked cometh, then cometh all contempt, and with ignom- ignominy reproach. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked, to overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are his wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and it's safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, and as a high wall in his own conceit. Before destruction, the heart of the man is haughty, and before honor is humility. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. He that is first in his own hour cometh and searcheth him. The lot causes contentions to seize, and parteth, however, the mighty. A brother offended is harder to win, to, is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. The poor youthest entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. A man that has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Chapter 18 of Proverbs. Uh, one couple of verses that stand out here. Uh, we hear this in a number of songs. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. Another one, um, Jim Rohn used to speak about this. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. And there's many other very, very good uh, thoughts in this proverb so we can reflect on later. Revelations 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful beard. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornications. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto the heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. How much had she has glorified herself? And the deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God, who judges her. 
When shall she see the smoke of her burning? Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment call. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine and wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls and men and the fruits that thy soul lustest after are departed from thee and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold precious stones and pearl for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein we were made rich all that that had ships in the sea by reason of her coastlines for in one hour is she made desolate rejoice over her thou heaven and being ye holy apostles and prophets for God hath avenged you on her and a mighty angel stood up at a stone a great millstone and cast into the sea saying thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all and the voices of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by the sorcerers were all nations deceived. And in her were found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. That's Revelation 9, 18. It's interesting that in an hour, it was all over within an hour. Everything was made desolate. And there's a call. I've heard this call before. And um, I'm just going to search back for it. And it basically it talks about coming out of her, my people. Where does it say that exactly? Oh, there. Come out of her. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her place. Anyway, that's Revelations 19. Now, I'm going to flip over and we're going to look or 18, sorry. We're going to look at uh, the um, financial breakthrough checklist um, from the Marcerello teachings on financial uh, some financial wisdom here. So, financial breakthrough checklist. When you face financial problems, there are many considerations to make based upon strong scriptural principles that will enable you to experience your financial breakthroughs. This checklist is based upon major foundational truths concerning giving and receiving that God established, which will enable you to take hold of his promises of supernatural provision. Use this checklist to determine if you are following God's plan of giving and receiving. Prayerfully ask yourself the following questions and read the references listed. Ask God to help you determine an area where you are not acting in accordance with his plan. So I'm just going to list them and we'll do a deeper dive study on these later. Number one, do I act in faith on God's promises, expecting him to meet my needs, or am I bound by fear, worry, and doubt concerning my financial circumstances? 